Alright, well, uh... It, it is, it is that, it is that day. It's time to da 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 date! Some da 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 daddies? Yeah. Yeah. John, thank you for the resub. Thank you for being seven. How, how does it feel? How does it feel to be not old? Seven is very not old. Seven! I don't know. I, I, I don't have anything else to say, really. Let's just start the thing. We have so many profiles. Is it going to be under you or is it going to be under Strems? It's going to be under Strems. Oh, no, it has to be under you. Shit. Okay. I'm pretty sure there are multiple save files. Well, it's not like you are going to be using this switch anyway. That's true. I have two friends online. Sweet. Now, Nicholas isn't entirely sure which daddy he wants to date. I kind of have an idea of, uh, of which one I want to go for. Oh, how's the sound, by the way? I'm only asking because I can actually hear the TV. <laughs> Yeah, this does seem to be, like, louder than most other games. Oh, hello, Wonton. Are you ready to meet your stepdad? in the hand is better than a bird in the eye. Thank you, game. Dad. Dad. Dad, wake up! You said that five minutes ago. And also ten minutes ago. I finally opened my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. I'm weird. Morning, Manda Panda. Aww. Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. I've been awake for five seconds. C give me a break. Medicine is not always the best medicine. Lies! It's Never give up! Never remember! Build that, Build that, Build that dad. dad! Uh... I gave myself the, uh, middle one, the dad bod. Huh. I do like that there's trans rep in here. Just Indeed. cash. Uh... I don't know, I, I, I think I'm somewhere in between these two. You think you're ripped? That you're shredded? No. Build That Dad is my favorite game show. Right. I'm just gonna hey, go with that. Buddy. Uh... Yes, hair. No hair. I turned the hair off on my personal one, but... Uh... Yeah, that's your skin Sure, tone. That's, that's close enough. Uh, I have a head that is shaped like a head. Heart head! I like how when Mark played this game, he was like, what is the longest head? Uh, I, I don't know. Head. Sure, we'll go with square head. Because why not? Ah, ah. Uh, well, Do you want the Aaron or the Danny hairs? Oh yeah, this game? Made by the Game Grumps. Yes, as it, it did say the yes, thing. Yes, but... Ooh, do the pompadour hair. Hmm. The one that I built G has that swoopy hair. <laughs> Space warrior, thank you. No, gotta go with swoopy hair. That's the one that I gave my personal file as well. One time. Uh, no, no, not that dark. And it 
Nicholas has like a light brown hair. That I think is the closest you're gonna get. Probably. Okay. On to the eyes. Uh, well, we we're, we're Do gonna. Do you want the shoujo eyes? One time. He's been a naughty boy. Code gray. Code gray. Yep, everyone spam your code grays if you have them. Everybody give it up for America's favorite fighting Frenchman. He's not American, nor is he a Frenchman. He could be. Nor does he that. fight. He fights me all the time. I, this, I cut his nails today. These eyes are how I feel currently. CP. Yeah. But you had a burrito, and now you're kind of ready to stream. Salty eyes! Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go sleepy eyes. Nose. Uh. Where's the big ol' Ukrainian nose? Uh, is it that one? Yeah. Yeah, sure. What you doing, baby? What is this? Oh. Uh, well, that's a cat. Why, why is he eating you? Uh, because there's a part of a treat that was, uh... He found in the couch because he is the classiest of babies. Cheese mouth. Not that. Pouts. Liver mouth. <laughs> no, I don't like that one. No. I I think that one or the cat one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm not... Just because you said that, I'm gonna go with not that one. Ooh! The Danny brows. No. Ooh, what are the ones on the bottom right? Wizard, wizard. brows. I do not have wizard brows. You do have pretty wild brows. You're right. Yeah. Facial hair? Uh, no. Okay. No. No. And. Underoos! Yes, you should wear the Danny clothes. Yep. That's not bad. I can see you wearing that shirt. As you currently wear a Deadpool shirt. Yeah. I gave my dad the Sagan shirt. Because I like the stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to... Whoop. Ah. I'm gonna have to not know what I'm doing. I Drink. guess we're going with... Drink the... that water. Ah, thank you. Where did my where did I put my water? Right in there front it of the is. Mic. Thank it's behind the mic, actually. Mic. Waddle. Woo woo. Thank you. Name that dad. First name. Um First name. Oh you have First to name na you're going with your actual name. No. Well, I meant like your actual first name. Nick Bees. Be that dad. B? Yes. No, I, I didn't actually want to change it. Thank you, game. Be that dad. Be that dad. What you doing, buddy? Why are you being so weird? Because he's in attack mode. Ah. You should it. maybe move him from attack mode. Ignore that cat! She says while actively playing with him. Eh. I got chomped. Did you fall asleep packing? Yes. 
I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like they did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed, except for one. When do we do a house? When we find a house. Yeah, we, we've currently just applied for a mortgage and opened a joint bank account. Wait, straggler. Hmm, what's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Oh, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. Those glasses, though. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Oh, and then you get to pick if you adopted her, have two dads, or uh, possibly you're a trans dad. I suppose that is, yeah, that's a possibility. I just think that's a neat feature. Yeah. What are you doing? The only way your mother can I... <laughs> Nick doesn't have words. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? <laughs> oh my god, that dragon costume! You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Right, yep. Definitely repressed that memory. And this was you in your horse phase. Oh. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Oh no. I think that was his. Amanda lunches for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. <laughs> nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. <laughs> The Scomminess Manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look up into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. Dad! I hit buttons accidentally. Oh, um, you just uh, got which Emma wrong. I did. Yeah, that, that's fine. Give it like yeah. a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who... Uh... Emma P was the one who tried to steal uh, people's pets. No, Dad. That was Emma S. Uh, she moved to Kentucky three years ago. I miss her. Uh, I also miss my hamster. Sir Hammington the Brave. Uh. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Yeah, and it got us a $20 uh, gift card to McFridays. Love it. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. I think you mean food poisoning. You know, with a Z. It's for Canadian. Of course. Ugh, Dad. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. I'm going to throw a flaming tennis ball at the police station now, Burb. Well, Have you, a good time. You are in uh, Vegas. That's the place to do it. Drive safe. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. <sighs> I finally decide to break the silence. Well, so was she born or was she adopted? Which is clearly when you just pull a baby out of thin air. Of course. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender. But of course I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. And I didn't know what to do. But your mother. Oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen her. She says, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Dot dot dot. Uh. 
She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss her. Oh, so do I. I miss fake mom too. <laughs> Can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The movie van won't wait forever. You're right. Ah. I mean, won't they? That's that's what they're there for. <laughs> Enjoy your harvest mooning, Joan. Peace out. Bye. We're gonna date good. some Wonton, dads. Wontons in zoomy mode. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hmm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Alright! Hey, remember when I broke the back window pl- We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Huh. There'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. Uh, you ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It'll forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rear view mirror. So... So what? Hmm. So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. <clears throat> Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Multiple places to sleep! Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. Yeah. What a deal! I mean, if sleep weren't for the week. You sleep more than anyone I know. I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. <laughs> Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. All right. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Huh? Not gonna happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Oh, I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Ah. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Mm, don't you dare. Senior. Hmm. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. Hmm. I'm just gonna ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a, forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer, we need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. I'll get- we'll get some work done and then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Why? Mm. Wouldn't it say sold? For this reason. Hmm. hi -ya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, Sweet Pea. I got a problem with authority! I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. She kicked it. <laughs> and an ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. I need some... I gotta get my hands on a nice cup of the old... A nice hot cup of the old bean juice or I'm gonna be useless all day. Hey, look, it's real Nick. Hey. Hey, look, it's a bot. Oh, I got it. I'm on it. Wait, wait. Ban. Ban hammer. Hammer! Did it. Why are we banning Hammer? What did he do? Captain Hammer. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it! Everyone needs to know how to use power tools. We know how. We just don't know where the battery for our drill is. Exactly. Ah. 
and we don't know how to use it without that. We walk down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Uh, probably a bag. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Hey! Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I, I guess? Hmm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? Because... You coffee. tell them, me! At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't gonna come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel, like, a little bit weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Aww. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! We walk inside. Hey. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls, and patrons lounge around on well-worn-in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey, dude. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? I'm not sure that voice sounds stoned enough. What's with the name? Hey, dude. Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb. Hmm. I think it's mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? Hmm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. I feel that. Same. Hey. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Hmm. So what'll it be? Oh. I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately overwhelmed. I'll have, uh... uh Godspeed, you black coffee. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Godspeed, you black emperor is a really amazing and influential- Ah! Wow. I'm... I, I need to not rest my thumb on the top of the Joy-Con nope. because that's where the R button is. Doing the thing again. Uh -huh. Blood coming right up. Can I can I have a, can I have a Godspeed you black coffee, but also with sugar? No, it's just black like your soul. It's still black if it has sugar though. I'm just saying, black like your soul. Mm. My soul is still black if it has sugar though. And for you, I'll have a macchiato de Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, uh medium. Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, uh I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. Matt hasn't introduced himself yet. How do I know what his name is? It's fine. What's his deal? <laughs> Let the man make his puns. They're cooler brands than you listen to anyway. Hey! Hey! Ska was cool once! This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. Sink right into it. It's certainly comfier than our futon. I miss our couch. Yeah, me too. It's getting delivered to Jordan's house on Saturday. Saturday. We can go and sit in our garage on the couch. How was it just now that you decided you should change the name of that size? Maybe no one else pointed it out that it was a misleading name? Maybe he just thought of that size now. Maybe, but also Wonton slept literally all day, and now that we're streaming, he's decided, hey, let's be awake. Yeah, that's because he slept literally all day. I mean, to be fair, I, I laid around with him, so like... I didn't. I wish you did. So do I. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. <laughs> this place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Deal. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Come on. What do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. I think this is a conversation if we ever had a child they would have with you. Probably. Or you. Yeah. See, we're making 
making progress. My biggest fear is that if we ever reproduce, we'd have an extrovert child. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, maybe they all have a hive mind. Good point. Yeah. Matt, set, Matt sets our drinks down at our table, and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Sounds about right. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Nick. Hey! We're right on! Nice to meet you both. Oh. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. I am a, a raging caffeine addict, after all. You are. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Oh. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the into the death of tag and comes up with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. We should make banana bread. We should. Well, I think we're gonna have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that Nana Bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate with the... Uh... I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right. Yes. That. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. Ah! This is amazing. Hey, dude. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. What?! Oh, speaking of, we need to get cinnamon. I think cinnamon would go well in banana bread. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Also chalky chips. Oh, we have chalky chips. Never we mind. We do, yes. We, we might need different chalky chips, though. Yeah, they might be pretty stale. Yeah. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. We also need bananas. Also, we were out of bananas today. Oh, uh, there's it, bananas in the freezer. And it frickin' sucked. There are bananas. Like, the entirely black ones. Yeah, the, they're only black because they're frozen. Well, I, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna have to go with banana bread candies. You know, you, you know like the, the punk band? Oh. What? There's banana in the banana bread? Yes, there is, Eric. I hate next, to shatter your brain. Next he's gonna tell us there's bread in it. <gasps> bread makes you fat? I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. Wink. What? That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Hey. Yeah, Banana Bread Kennedy's. Strong decisions. That's our baby. Oh. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should leave saying baby to the professionals. Burn my banana bread! I love it. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Hey, yeah. See, it sounds good when you say it. It does not. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. Da, da, da. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Oh. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? One cup of coffee does not constitute being full of caffeine, maybe, Amanda. Maybe it was the biggie small size. What a rookie, but I got a medium, though. Whatever. I need a nap. We just had coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. Now all aboard the train to Sleepy Time Junction! a lot of broccoli. No. Nick hates broccoli. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Nick! Bruh! Bruh! Oh. I turn around and am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig! Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy... Wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. Craig! Been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Nice. Uh huh, yeah, I cleaned up my act. 
Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped! Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We met we went to college together. We were roommates for a while too. <laughs> Amanda, did you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Ah. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Oh, thank Aww. you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. She is cute. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Ooh! Are you babysitting? Mm -hmm. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers with a capital F! Oh yeah, they capitalize anything to do with dads in this game. Yeah, I know. Where you been, man? Mm -hmm. I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh, I mean, man. Ashley. A Ashley is her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley. And, uh, we got divorced last year. Oh. Dude, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. That's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Oh. Ain't life something, bruh? Right? Kegstand Craig is a father of three! Kegstand Craig? Mm -hmm. Oh, haha, <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. <sighs> Eric. Mm -hmm. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. We got that. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Oh, bruh. I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really need to keep my keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. We don't R understand really? this concept. She's she's got to be like maybe twenty pounds. I, Probably I'm bad less. At, I'm bad at judging pounds. I'm, I'm gonna guess based on the size of the baby, um, like maybe twelve to fifteen pounds. Mm. She's like our cat size. You, you jog daily? I jog yearly. If that. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. You can't present a character named River and have me not make a Rivers in the Desert joke. See, we're- I- I was gonna make a Firefly joke. Yeah. But... I don't know. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude! You should join me sometime. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nice. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up, do a bra brunch like the old good old days. A, a brunch? A brunch. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Oh. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling! Why's that? The Krag I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. <laughs> One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy! And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I aspire to be like Craig one day. College Craig or current Craig? Craig. Hey. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs! He was jogging! Ah. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll, I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Craig! Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Also, fun fact, because you decided to go take a nap, we missed out on meeting Brian and his dog. I have no problem with that. Just saying. Except College Craig. Craig! So therefore you don't get to do the Pokemon battle. Uh, I'm, I'm a little sad about that.
Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Hmm? Come on, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. Huh. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Huh, of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on, I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yeah! A dog? Yeah! Forget art school, I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. I've obtained two things to put on my bucket list on this stream. What's the other one? <laughs> Amanda laughs. Ah. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back onto the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design! Open it! Ah, I see, of course. How could I, how could I have forgotten already? But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Mm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future, not a big deal. Huh. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Mm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah blah blah. Um, Lee... Oh. Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Sad! Uh. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Uh. Okay, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experiment. Back. Never mind. I'm gonna just... You want me to try to find you the like little controller handle oh, thing? I'm good. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. I know, it's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't put her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight? Ugh. So many. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Huh. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans! <laughs> oh. <laughs> One or two. Two. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones all the kids these days are doing. Hmm. Is the other option the mayor one? Yes. Alright, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... I lost the game. I'm just gonna say go to bed. Yeah. Which game? Go out and watch the game? <laughs> you know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Uh. The game. On TV. At somewhere other than here. Mm. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go do drugs and commit some late arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda, Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. Street rat! Which game? Triple H, obviously. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Oh. Yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Pat, pat. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Uh, no, making fun of sports is played out. 
All right, then. But you know what's not played out? Making fun of Tom Brady. I knew you were going to say exactly Fucking that. Fucking Tom Brady. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Vega. Fucking yep. Tom Brady, yeah. Totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their names. They're all named Emma. Emma, That's Emma, fun. Emma, and Emma. And Emma. Dan, Dan, and Ben. Just as I'm heading toward my room, the doorbell rings. You can't beat the whammy bar, except you totally can. Yeah. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! Hello! A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Hi, I know it's kind of late, but I baked way too many cookies and I just can't have these in the house or I'll eat them all. That is the wrong attitude to have. Narm, narm, narm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm I'm Nick. That's what my name is. Oh. I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. <laughs> but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Uh, that is an important uh, part. <laughs> We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah. Amanda pokes her head out of her room and immediately hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Oh. Hey. Well, thanks for the cookies. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Mm. Amanda, come back! And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Why does everyone we've met so far also have kids? Be because because it, that's it's called the, Dream Daddy. That's that's the thing with with the game. If everyone's everyone a dad. is a dad except for the, Amanda. Except for the children. Yeah. Oh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. To try raise more than two. Can't, I can't drink. I have to work tomorrow morning. Where were we getting, why are we drinking? Just because there was a typo. Oh, I have four kids. What have you done? Oh. Uh, I, I meant... <laughs> Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no. This is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? Nope, not anymore. She died. Yeah. Oh. Uh. uh. Oh. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Oh. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Oh, oh. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? <laughs> that sounds great! My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, neighbor, I'll let you get to bed and see you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Hey, it's Donnie. What's up, Donnie? Welcome to Dad's. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Stuff? Stuff. And things. Oh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Wink. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. 
You are much too young to have an 18-year-old child. Yes, I am. And with that, Joseph's gone. You seem nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face, and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. I can't drink, I have to work in the morning! I assume that was supposed to be a recovery. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> See, you're fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Oh, I'm they're gone. I'm sorry. I wanted one of those. Oh, exactly two, one. Two fucking bad. Yes. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? The yeah, Emma's helped. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm gonna go catch the game. When did the Emma's get here? I d eh. Have fun, Dad. I'm so confused. As are we all. Look at his murder mitts. Oh, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way! Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be... A big burned-out neon sign hangs above Tiny Dive Bar. I can't drink. I have to work in the morning. This is making me so happy. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. Well, be. Be. One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Deal. That is the it, clearly it's root beer. I don't I don't enjoy the beer. Yeah, me the neither. Barks root beer. And A and W root beer. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. Oh, saints. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Oh. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortab uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Hmm. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Nick, by the way. Oh. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh... Hmm. Buy a gal a drink? Sure! I almost reluctantly sing signal the bartender and order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company now. Hey. So, what do you want to know? Uh, what's the latest gossip around here? You came to the right broad. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything, know everyone. Nothing gets past me. So... Come on. So what? I thought you were gonna... Hmm. I forgot what we were talking about. About the gossip? Oh, you said hey, nothing gets past you? Hey, soul. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You thought we were done with Mary's? Guess what? No! Oh, right. 
I'm also a steel trap. Confidential to a fault. So, what else can you tell me about this part of town? Hmm, you are the last good bit about this part of town. <laughs> it's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. <laughs> she leans closer. <laughs> Mary and Mary and Mary and Mary and Pandora. Time to look hey. up other games with people they marry for Nick to play next. Is is there a Mary in Scott Pilgrim? Maybe. Ramona is played by a Mary. That's true. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh uh, boy. Uh, maybe some other time. Uh, one of the deadly exes is played by a May, which is close to Mary. May was one of the Marys in Persona. Mm -hmm. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close than what I'm comfortable with. <laughs> Nick is dying right now. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an, an, a, that's an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Sports. Enjoying the game? Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. Yeah, this is the dad rector's cut. It sure is. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. SPORTS! The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet, che quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us, based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. Name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Nick. I... You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah... Robert chuckles. <laughs> She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. Slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jimmy Kimmel's. What about the best sport, golf? Um... Gol golf isn't a team sport, though. And it's also very boring to watch on television, in my opinion. Truth. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Oh. Nah, that'd be Kim. <laughs> Neil waves from across the bar. Hi, it's me, I'm Neil. <laughs> Rob, where are you at? Probably sleeping. <laughs> Probably. Good die, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. What about young Neil? Okay. Hmm? You a whiskey fella? Beer, Why are you licking the table? The cat, not Nick. Yeah. Beer, but I'll drink most things. You know what could be a team sport? Mini golf. Okay. You like shots? Mm -hmm. I like shots. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Uh. Here's, Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Hey. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Nick, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. I know if I play this right. He'll surrender by early light? Wink. Wait, 
He has a hand tattoo? He has. I can't see it because there's the... the... He allegedly has hand tattoo. Yeah, I think the dialogue box is blocking it. Cool leather jacket. I like your jacket. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from first floor to first floor. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious. And cool. Oh, we've been hydrated. M shots, 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 shots of water. You know, I have enough to dehydrate you. But you have to work in the morning. I do. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? No, my daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Mm. Damn work ruining fun, right? Right? Family time. Single dad. Oh. Mm. He gets up. I... Be right back. Got powder in my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Apparently he took it off at some point. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Is he snorting coke? Like what? I think he was actually just going pee. Yep. Mm. I live in this cul-de-sac down the road. Does everybody live there? Yes. Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Oh. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? Hey! We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Nick. Oh? So are we doing this, or what? What? I... You know, do you want to come inside, or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. No, thank you. I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Mm-hmm. Sure. Apparently, if you sleep with him night one, you just get nowhere with him for the dating. Hmm. Okay. I head home, head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. Well, that's just wrong. Nick doesn't like socks. Yeah. Try not to make assumptions about people. That's a good dad tip. Yeah. I want on. He's just playing with a toy. Okay. Just a noisy toy. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rass and shine, you're the bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, BT Dubs. Smiley face. How did Craig get my number? Craig! Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Oops, must have waked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your spool on? No. I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Uh, hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Aww. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Our food order was not lost in the building. The no, guy was in the... the parking lot and couldn't figure out what door to go in or something, even though it's very clearly marked. No, he just couldn't figure out our intercom system. Oh. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Dew? Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out in front, stretching. Of course he, uh, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh. Hey bruh, good morning. Oh, he doesn't have a small child strapped to his chest this time. Nope. Maybe, hey, maybe some actually has custody today. Good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. 
Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You didn't have coffee? What is wrong with you, me? Do it. I mean, you're at the gym, so, uh... You ready to kick some Ag butt? Against my will. Oh, Wonton has found a jingle ball. Help. This is it. This is how I die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got negative points with Craig. Congratulations. It's okay, I wasn't gonna go for Craig. It'll be alright, dude. We'll ease you into it. Hey! We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. Wonton's not. All these people look like they could break me in half. And it <laughs> oh, seems no, like not the jingle balls. Craig is friends with all of them? Oh. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Hmm. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. Oh, now he's in the pantry. This, this is a decent place to be. Walking. So, I, I know we're on treadmills. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Oh. Very good. What's all this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. Hey! It might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a mu on a machine I think was <laughs> once used to process grain into flour. Also, I definitely almost read machine as mustache. <laughs> I don't know how. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bruh. What do you think he's doing? Uh, he's... He's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. <laughs> oh no, Craig is Eggplants. turning up the speed. Eggplants! I better do the same. That means you got good points with Craig. Yes. Sexy points with Craig. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Oh. A couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buff thing? Buffing. Oh. oh, Coach McTwin's softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Hmm. Ah, uh, keep busy. What do you do for fun? I don't know any Jimmy Buffett songs. You don't know Hey Good Looking? What you got cooking? Is that a Jimmy Buffett song? Me. Okay. I... Oh, you know that... Sue and Jeff have a Jimmy Buffett brand margarita maker. Yep. Margaritaville. Also a Jimmy Buffett song. Never heard that one. Oh, honey. I, I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge. Soaking up all that intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, wilderness survival, uh, aliens. I prefer Rolling Stones. I'm a Mo fan of Metallica. Mo mostly those things. Mm. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. Oh. More eggplants! We're, we're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now! I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying! I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body! Hmm. That's dramatic. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Huff. No! I don't like this story. <laughs> Actual sounds that Nick would make if he was working out. Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Oh. And we were at that party, and you had to make me feel better? You told me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand to get everyone cheering. And then I... <laughs> Try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Bro. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to me and close cake stand with the dying dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off, scooped off of the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. Hey. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation and we get home and we get him into the bowl of water but the prognosis was grim. And the next day, he's <laughs> alive and well. Aliens indeed, soul. 
Hells yeah. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never... Well... I shoot <laughs> off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts! Bro. Dude, bruh, you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. I'm... fantastic! I manage to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh. Easy game. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright. Well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. Mm -hmm. It's a protein shake, brah! Oh, th thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh, boy. Here goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Bro. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood. Treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? What year is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Always help when you need. Dad tip. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. Why Why do you need a sticker? Schools. School shootings, etc. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing in his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sorry. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Ho. Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Sorry. Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth spent, sent me on a wild goose chase. Shake's fist. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the out of the classroom next to his locker. Hmm? Lucian. Don't you have a third period to get to? Also, it's 3.55. Why is it only third period? Mm -hmm. Is that a fine Mr. Vega? Oh. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not no. cool. You must be Nick. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? How many periods does this school have? I don't know. How long are the hours? I don't know. Ah. ah! Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I hated those things. I might get stuck in this. Oh. Alright, where were we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Oh. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. <laughs> that didn't work very well. That worked even worse. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Lol. Hmm. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable, unreliable narrator in the sense that 
the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa! Remember to the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your text. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Yeah, I am. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please, call me Hugo. <sighs> I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? <sighs> Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... It's me. Amanda is me. Yeah. This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm? See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... Hmm. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. Did you like to make a grilled cheese after stream? No? Woo! I just saw our popcorn. Never mind. Uh -huh. I need to. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Ah. Yes? They ever catch that rye? Ah. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little, a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's been going on. Ah. I pull up to the carpool, and, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the entire time? It was a very productive meeting. Eh? I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing! Let's go to the mall food court! Let's go to the mall! Let's go to the mall! Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Oh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because that's sometimes what kids do. And that's okay. But also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you! Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Huh? Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Dad? Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Mm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who you texting? Ah, Noah. Who 
Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Ah. <sighs> yep. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would... Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation's over. To the mall, then! Let's go to the mall! Let's go to the mall! We arrive at the mall! A big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kinda dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner! Yeah! Hell yeah! Language, Missy! Heck yeah? Better. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There is greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? Bread makes you fat? Oh my god. Bread with cheese on it makes you fat? It's so good. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Ah. She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig oh. in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Also soul mm. says, hydrate. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So. Huh. Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. Sigh. Which meme? All... all memes. Ugh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Ugh. Dad, it's complicated. You see, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. Aww. And that's worse, er, and what's worse than that is the movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Dad, Dad please. Ah. Anyway, changing the subject. He said a bad word. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Hmm. What? You know, the, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk, punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Mm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time? <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah! Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still kind of see the outline, kinda. I'm so... Proud! Speech! Amanda. Hey. Speech! 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 Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting! Huh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic movement that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Bees had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Oh. After begging her father to take to take her to Dead Goth and Beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. When I was 
Hi, Yon. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself with the band teacher, t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in, in a dead goth and beyond. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? Speaking of, we found a mug at a similar version of Dead Goth and Beyond in our local mall. Yep. This is sh shut the fuck up. And Nick's mom needs it. She does. This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. I don't really want to do the work today. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Ugh. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian-inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly had the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I, I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Same. Hmm. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Oh. Let's see. Well, it should seem I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls, whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Ah. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. Hmm. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. That's right, I don't know if you'll actually go on dates today. Yeah, we might need to... We might we might need to make this a two-day sort of ordeal. It does take a while to do all the intro stuff and meet all of the possible dads to date. Mm -hmm. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. <laughs> oh cool, Long Haul Paranormal Ice World Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yes! They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts? Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted! This is an episode of I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet! Uh, oh no! The, the ghost, ghost on that control, control of the truck! I can't steer on them there damn ice roads! Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you... This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. What's that like? One would assume good. Sleep is important! Make sure you're getting enough. Huh. Whistle while you work. Oof. Morning, sleepyhead. 
Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so I'll get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better in, at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Ow. Ikea? Ikea. So, you excited for the cookout today? If there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies mm -hmm. that everyone brings to parties. Mm-mm. Chalky chip or bust. But the terrible store-bought sugar cookies are actually not terrible. They're okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me! Huh? Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? No. I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Hmm. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Oh. The social butterfly. Oh, well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Huh? What? No, we have to be fashionably late. We should have to a cookout on time. You know what? We're going early! Just because you said that! No thanks. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. I'm not. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph! I wave to get his attention. <clears throat> the moment he sees wow. us, he jogs over, arms open wide. That burp tasted like burrito. It was glorious. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. Have you brought veggies? Oh. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Uh. Hi. Hi. Uh. <laughs> This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Why does he hate his children? I guess better. Ah. Why do his children hate existing? They stare creepily and say nothing. Yeah. Drink, says John. Ah, thank you, John. And then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Why does he hate his children? Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. That's not a name, Joseph! Actually, it is. Just not spelled that way and not in that culture. Okay, fair. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What's she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Shock! Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Oh, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Chris to bed? Mary and Mary and Mary and Mary. Huh? <sighs> I'll have to look for him. Hmm. What? You'll have to... Ooh, uh... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Hmm. Mary, this is our new neighbor Nick and his daughter Amanda. Hmm. And shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Is it you? It's not you. I'd be drunk by now. True. Maybe she is. I had two glasses of wine yesterday. I'm so proud of you. You didn't pass out. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. What's on what you doing? Fighting a bag. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Josie knows that Mary, Mary knows that I know. Ah! What are words? It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Yeah. Ha ha ha, my wife has a wonderful sense of humor. But please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Hey Nick, have you met Brian yet? Who? Hey, Brian, come over here for a sec. A man in a loud Hawaiian shirt jogs up to me. 
Hey, 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 yeah. Brian, this is Nick. He just moved into the neighborhood. It's, it's funny me. because Brian is Nick's dad's name. This is weird. Hello. Hey. Well, well pleased to meet you. Put her there. <laughs> Brian pulls me into a handshake, engulfing my hand in a vice-like grip. Ow. Oh, yeah. I let out a small squeak after my hand bones have been ground to dust. Whoa. Not much of a handshake guy, huh? Guess I'm more of a hugger. Yeah. Which house did you move into? The ranch-style one in the cul-de-sac. Ah. Oh, the one that's just like mine, but smaller. That kind of hurts. Is he trying to one-up me? My instinctive dad competitiveness kicks into gear. Are you trying to fight a moth, dude? It's leaner. I practice design minimalism in my purchases. Why own more when you can own what's right? Sure. Right. Also, I'm pretty sure my house could outmaneuver your house and achieve a tactical advantage. Oh, let me introduce you to my daughter. A kid peeks out from behind Brian. Hey. This is Daisy. Hello. Hey. Hi, what grade are you in? Fifth grade. Hey. We're actually trying to get her to skip 6th grade. Not to brag, but she's pretty smart. Not to brag, that's exactly what bragging is. Men are smart too. Hmm. Eh? Thanks, Dad. Ah. Well, I'll be around the party if you feel like saying hey later. You got it. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. <laughs> Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Hi, I'm Daisy. Can you pass me an ice cream? Certainly. Maybe. Certainly maybe. There is one left. Ah. You can have the entire case. Wow. Do you of want one. one. Do you want a box? I kind of want to put this directly on his head and see how long it takes him to get off of get it off of him. Amanda I and I. Worst. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. That's your child. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Aww. Come on, Dad. Who are you gonna party with when I go off to school? I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <sighs> Dad. Uh, we're gonna talk about weather. Ah. No, do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into, into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? You know his name. It's Robert. That guy who kept trying to one-up me, who Literally you, five seconds ago. You just met him. Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig! Wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? Yep. That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Well, you knew Robert lived here. I glance around hey, the yard. Hey, hey, I glance around the yard and notice Wonton scratching a chair. Fucking Wonton, man. And also Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Was it really only last night? Oh no, they got me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Awkwardly. Hey, guys! Hey. Nick, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Like I didn't just talk to you three seconds ago. Oh, you betcha. Got the living room or in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. Nick, have you met Robert yet? We keep meeting. <laughs> yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. <laughs> we were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish! Uh, Drink more. That was fast. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. 
I bet she loved it. Hey. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Hmm. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. Hmm. Did I put it on too strongly? Yes. Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Hey. Anyway. Really? I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have ki- Wait. What happened the last time? Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, little Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid, and in my army days. I was from Kansas. They built him tougher up there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the old rope bridge snaps. Hmm. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming out. Brown for his mama. Losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul. Here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound. But now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I'm able to dress the wound. Uh. I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms. That bond breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. Mm -hmm. So that's campaigns for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. Hey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went in a tubing down river and he lost a flip flop. Miss that kid. <laughs> ah. Brian and I laugh nervously. Mm -hmm. Or am I, kid? Brian and I tense up again. Hey. I'm kidding. Hey. Phew. Hey. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of you like a steering wheel. In front of her like a steering wheel. That makes more sense. We gotta get off this haunted truck! Hmm. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors! All right. Quick, hit the emergency escape button! Trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Why not? Uh. <laughs> I'm just imagining her being as sassy as your sister. They don't have that. They don't, they don't, ha we don't have that in Canada. And then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. Huh. The imaginary truck. <laughs> anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. I like that. Though I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. <laughs> Robert. Hey. Wait a second. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. Oh. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah. It's such quality reality television. Last time. On Survivor. Yes. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and horror documentaries. <laughs> dad? He he is a dad, yes. No, but like, is he my dad? Because that sounds like something my dad would say. Alright, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here on this art, harsh, icy, wheat wasteland. Oh my god. There's a whole table of food right over the- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. That's what kids do. <laughs> Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. I also like Robert. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's, he's a good- he's a good dad. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Alright! Okay! Yeah. But not an actual fire. Yeah. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah! Now you're getting it. Yeah! Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Hey. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sorta has a way with kids. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, it's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. 
No. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. Honestly, if I could have spent all my recesses in the library, I probably would have. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. <laughs> oh, kids, right? You gotta love them. You're required to by law. I hear that. <laughs> Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try and put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Sure, let's go talk to the cool kids. Hmm. And Hugo. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place, and to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the postmodernism in America you're completely disregarding the context in which that work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig, Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, hmm. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. Not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? Hmm. I am so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig. Craig, who returns it? Hmm. Well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had a better painting overall. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I don't know. We were just discussing the importance of context from talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Hmm. Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How can I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionalism and the abstractionist beauty of cubism? Man, that's all way above my head. Same. Me too. Hey, uh... Haha, <laughs> it's all good, man. The cool thing about his art is that we can all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it, and that's awesome. Uh, nice. Hello. I didn't play any Persona this weekend. I'm so disappointed. Me too. You even got past Okumura finally. I know. Then I went to go see my mom, and you were asleep when I got home. Yeah, I'm only a little sorry about that. I mean, I could have still played just on a really quiet volume, probably. But... Yeah. Just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Hey! Sorry, sorry. Alexander, please. No? I'll lick your face. You will not. I get really fired up about art stuff. Nick, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you looked cute in it. Hey! Now there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Am I cool now? The, the girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Oh. 
Ah, hey Nick, this is my daughter. Hello! I'm Carmen Cito. Ah. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Friends plural! Yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend? And, uh, your teacher? Whoa! Oh, die, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh! Ew. You still gonna give me that overdue term paper? Ah. Uh. <laughs> great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Hmm? She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Sweet Manchego! Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Huh? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Why does he hate his child? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Um... Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Craig! Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. Mm. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn. It burned down half my yard, too. I nice. don't know. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. Nick, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Oh. Ernest. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. I blame their parents' generation for the failing economy. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... that was certainly... something. He seems nice. Hugo, oh, Hugo puts Hugo. his head in his hands and sighs. Hmm? I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Mm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is that even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber! Hey. See? That right there? We can't say that. Oh. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Yeah, sounds great. Wish that I could be like the cool dads, cause all the cool dads, they seem to fit in. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against, and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. No. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18, and she still thinks I'm... Cool. No, she doesn't. Mm -hmm. She doesn't. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure that our kids turn out okay. Rage against the machine. Yes. Yeah. I also understood the reference. Same. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. Don't let us eat up your time, Nick. 
Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. All two of them. All two of them! I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Mm. So I'm curious, can you just walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. <laughs> it's definitely an interesting choice. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. Oh. Nick, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the golf lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Golf and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Uh, have you consumed liquids, I request? I have, yes. Thank you. I I didn't like I I didn't express I didn't express it vocally, but I did do the thing. Can confirm. Watched it happen. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Uh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the golf lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. I. Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. My head hurts. Bats are cool, though. Hmm. Ah, pity. Hmm. Uh, you enjoying your party so far? Oh, definitely! Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone's so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hey. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as golf? Oh. That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and where? offering it to Amanda. From where? From his back pocket, probably. Yeah. He keeps he keeps them well hidden behind his cape. Apparently. <laughs> Amanda blushes and returns the ge the gesture with a curtsy. Why? <laughs> you do know how to treat a lady. Ah. Hello, Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Whoa. Hey. Won't, Won't you, you come, come play, play with, with us? us? Uh, come, come play, play with, with us forever. Duh. Guys, enough with the creepy twin stick. We've talked about this. Oh. Christian and Christy slowly back away. <laughs> Go gray. Where do you think they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Oh my god. I think I might have taped over Veggie Tales with the Shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of her wine. Uh. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? Uh. You had him a moment ago. Hmm. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. <laughs> Mary tips her glass to me. Uh. Ate my first time to the rodeo. My fourth. Give it a rest, buddy. I squeezed four <laughs> little... Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Grish? That would be great. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. No. Mary. Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? <laughs> More panic with Mary and Mary and Mary. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Nick yet? It's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Whatever. Huh. 
That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. No need to call me sir, Professor. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger? Sir. Oh. Coming right up, bud. You vegetarian? Yep. Oh. Make, Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Eh. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Soul wants to punch that kid. Yep. He is, uh, very punchable. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Huh. <laughs> what? Yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know? Also, why does Joseph hate his children? I don't know. I just play the game. I don't know what why they make these decisions. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? Ha! Huh. What?! Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! Oh no. We'll talk about this later. Oh. Hmm. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Uh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Oh. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. I wish I could do that. <coughs> Excuse me. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Nick, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Ah. He's ungrillable. Nice. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Hmm. Must should we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? I... I've never seen him make a mistake. Ah! Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too... cheesy. <laughs> we need to stop! <laughs> All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> Oh no, it's as bad as the bear puns, Nick. <laughs> it, it is. You're All not right, wrong. guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. <laughs> I love it! Man. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, in enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. We're gonna have some perfectly cooked cheeseburgers tomorrow. Yes. Except mm. maybe without the cheese. Well, I'll have cheese. Some lactose-free Havarti. Yeah. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Are we sure Joy didn't make this game? No. Hmm? Is, is Joy a secret game grump? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll make a killing. <laughs> Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? I forgot about Dad Book. Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Eh? Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Hey. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. There's demon magic afoot. I wouldn't be surprised. Dad demons. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. 
Amanda brings up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Are you done? Never. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Why Why is the sky purple? Mm. <laughs> Pretty fun party, don't you think? <laughs> Wish I could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. You, you and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. <laughs> because we were. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. We should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Okay, so now we need to make a decision, because from here we can start doing the dates. Okay. Uh, we've got an hour left before our quiet time. Yeah. Do we wish to wrap her up here, having done all the groundwork, and do all the dates next time? Or do you want to get a date in? I don't think you can do all three. How long would it take to do all three? Depends on which dad you want to go after. Okay. Probably 30 to 45 minutes for one date. So I, I would be able to conceivably get all three done in a single a singular stream. I hey, raise online. I would say so, yeah. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Can't imagine why. Any big plans for this evening? Huh. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? F of course. Just keep me posted. And be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. <laughs> I will. Make good choices. Huh. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Hmm. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Hmm. Do we go for bachelor number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six? Or number seven, yeah. who is not a bachelor. He, mm. he, he is, in fact, married, Yeah. Okay. but he's still an option. But he's not married to a British officer, I don't think. I don't know. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. Like, maybe eat ice cream and watch TV by myself. Yeah. I'm gonna... Throw a party! A real rager! All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking tight and you may just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Ah. Great. See you later. Finger guns. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. That sounds good. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I, I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of... Socializing. You did. I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Huh. Okay, see, so now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only assuaging my ex 
not only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I keep pass pa passing, yep, pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who is she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Yeah. Finally. Finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. So, Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Aww. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Hmm. Ah, whoops. Yes, I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda and Bees? Hmm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I have a right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't have even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Uh. Uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room, and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. <sighs> she eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. Mm -hmm. I thought about what you said last night. Mm -hmm. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. Uh, really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... I'm sorry for freaking out on you. You're an adult now. I should have... I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Huh? Team Bees? Team... Sorry, Team Bees? Team Bees? Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? Oh, yes. You know what? Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. All right. Bless you. <laughs> Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait. Wait, I thought yesterday was Saturday. Time is irrelevant. It this sure game. was. Wait, one more thing before you go. Hmm. What? What's Dad Book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Hmm? What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man! I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Huh. Alright, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Aww. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Alright, Pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, I am most likely to... Oh yeah, Netflix and Grill, baby. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go with a boat, obviously. What are your turn-ons? None of the above. Uh, what are you looking for in it, Dad? Uh, uh, sure. What did you want to be when you grew up? Pro skater who is also wait now, salty boat captain. Favorite movie genre. I'm not 
that old. Gonna have to go with old comedies that haven't aged well. Hmm, quite. Or old comedies that have aged well. Hmm, what's your ideal date? Ooh. 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 Are you, are you considering okay. arson? A lot of these are really good. I'm considering napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle together <laughs> for arson. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done our, our puzzle that's less than a thousand pieces together yet, that we've owned for literal years. Yeah, we need to do that. Also, we never played crib during our holidays. Well, I'm disappointed in us. We can do that after the stream. We it's still won't. technically part of your holidays. We probably won't. We probably won't. I'll take my traditional post stream bath and finish my audiobook. Yeah. Puzzle. Guess what I decided I was never leaving home without. Is it your cripplingly low self-esteem? No, on this current file it's a sensible cardigan. Arson, arson, arson! Sorry, soul. I let you down. You also let down Eric, who's no longer lurking, I don't think. Yeah. How dare he have school in the morning. Crippling me low self-esteem. Let's go! I spent a lot of time thinking about... Where I can get my next cup of coffee. When I can next get a cup of coffee. Yeah! I did Fun it fact, good. Nick's supervillain name is The Caffeined. It's true. See, that wasn't so bad. If I, if I were ever to... Uh change my username on anything for any reason, I, I would change it to the caffeine. <laughs> oh, that didn't take very long. I didn't put it on there very well. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. Hey! You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. <laughs> Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. You've got dads. Welcome. You've got dads. I love it. Oh, yeah, you've got a message on the side. That's uh, part of the Dad Rector's cut. Okay. <laughs> Dad Amanda. Uh, what? So it's like a little tutorial thing. Okay. Uh, basically, after each first date with like a dad, a message will pop up on the side as like an extra thing that you can do with multiple dads, basically. You should buy Amanda more things. <laughs> Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. So yeah, conversation ended, so. Nice. So then you can pick your dad, or we can uh, call her for the next. It's now 1020. How do I save? Uh, go to the little, uh, folder icon in the corner. You have to hit, I um, can't. Sorry, minus? It's minus. I kept trying to hit, uh, oh, L and yeah. L. Save! I mean, it auto-saves, but also saving manually is a good idea. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I have picked a dad, but y you guys don't get to know what that is, which dad I picked. Until next time! And appar um, apparently I also don't know. Yeah. It's also, gonna be a surprise for me, too. Also, I don't know what day we're gonna be doing the, the, uh, the next one. Soon, hopefully, but, like, I have to take a new photo of my work schedule because all I know is that I work at 9 o'clock tomorrow, and I don't know the rest of the week. I think I'm off on Thursday, but I don't know what my uh, Wednesday shift is, so... Okay. So, probably either Tuesday or Wednesday. Me. Unless I close both Tuesday and Wednesday. That would suck. It would. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us, uh, Soul. Yeah! We'll see you later this week. Yeah! 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 Say yeah! Yeah! Night, everybody. Night. Uh. My god.